the Twilight Princess. I remember her like it was yesterday. Her eyes, her hair, her black screen with verbose lines of code flying in every direction. She wasn't the most sophisticated, but she was my first. You know what they say about your first. Times have changed. We grow apart. We played around, discovered new exploits, and then I found her. Letter Bomb. I'm not a big fan of the Wii. Now, I, I think that's just because I don't like motion controls. However, it was one of the first major systems that you could soft mod. Cool thing about the Wii, the last system update was way back in 2010, and it's not going to be getting an update anytime soon, which is cool for me, because that means that this video is not going to be outdated for hopefully quite a while, unlike literally all of my other videos, which got outdated almost immediately because of new developments. So let's talk about Letterbound. Before we get into using Letterbomb and exploiting the Wii and installing Homebrew and all that fun stuff, I'm going to briefly explain how the Wii's operating system works. Don't you know you ride my world? The Wii and the GameCube are pretty much the same game console hardware-wise. Like, really, it's like the same thing, except the Wii has a slightly higher clock GPU and more security features, uh, which weren't really that useful to begin with. But yeah, uh, the Wii also has a Starlet coprocessor, which is ARM9 based, and it handles some security stuff, uh, including the boot chain. Now, uh, ignoring most of the boot chain, what you really need to worry about is Boot 2, which takes the operating system from the Wii storage and runs it. Now, when you hack your Wii using the Boot Me installer, you hijack the boot chain and load Boot Me before the Wii actually loads the main operating system. And this is cool, because Boot Me lets you, you know, back up the entire NAND storage of your Wii but to an SD card, which isn't that much. It's only like 500 megs or so. So yeah, having Boot Me is super useful because it gives you recovery options in case you fuck up your Wii when you hack it, which is probably, maybe, possibly going to happen if you don't read the guides and stuff. So yeah, uh, Boot Me super useful. However, Boot Me only works on earlier model Wiis because later on, they figured out that they fucked up a lot in the boot chain and they slightly secured it to the point where you can't just hijack it like you could before. However, you can install BootMe as an iOS, which brings me to iOS, which is the operating system that the Wii runs. Now, I'm not talking about Apple's iOS or Cisco's iOS. No, it's its own thing for the Wii and it's, you know, made by Nintendo and it's an embedded operating system. And iOS covers everything from the Wii system menu you know, the channel with all the Wii apps on it, uh, to the settings app, to, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, but the way the Wii handles iOS is really interesting. I've never seen it done anywhere like this before, probably for good reason, because it's kind of fucking stupid. But <laughs> when you update the Wii's system software through, like, a system update, you aren't updating the existing operating system. No, you're installing a brand new operating system alongside the old ones. So, like, for example, the last system update, which was 4.3, installed iOS 80, and I think 63, and I think one other one, depending on your system's region. So yeah, uh, you install this new operating system, and now your Wii just uses that one. So when you turn on your Wii, it looks for the newest iOS version, and it just runs that, and that is your system menu, that is your settings app, that is everything, until you actually load a game. Because when you load a game, the game will be like, yo dog, yo Nintendo Wii, I was made for this specific version of iOS, and the Wii was like, hey, I have that because I have all of them, because I never delete them. And it's like, so then it kills the operating system that it's currently running, and then loads the one that the game needs. And then the game, you know, reads the disc and, you know, does all that stuff that the game needs. Now, this is just my speculation, but I think the reason why they have it set up that way is because Nintendo really didn't know how to handle uh, forward compatibility with their SDK, their, like, developer kit. So, you know, developer is making a game for the early version of the Wii iOS, like, when the Wii first came out. And then, you know, they're using all the nice little programming things that Nintendo has included in the development kit. So then, you know, four or five years down the line, after the latest system update, 
you know, Nintendo would have to make sure that all the old Wii games and all the s system calls and API, you know, programming whatnot works with the new version of iOS. And I think that they just didn't want to do that, and they were like, well, fuck it, we'll just have a whole bunch of different versions of iOS all at the same time, and call it a day. Now, I think that's the real reason, real reason why they did that. Uh, I think that they would also claim that it was a security thing, but it's really not secure at all because, you know, we manipulate it a lot, as you'll see later on in this video. So yeah, it's pretty much how iOS works. Um, I kind of just briefly covered how the Wii's OS works. I, like, I missed a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, if you want to go way down the rabbit hole and just read all about the Wii, I'll provide some links in the description. But with that, let's hack the Wii! I bought this Wii for about $30 from a local retro game store for the sole purpose of making this video. I was really glad that I was able to get an entire game console for the price of only 10,000 Dogecoin. The only downside was that this Wii was locked with parental controls. Now, luckily, I found this site that lets you remove parental controls without contacting Nintendo about it. Once I took care of that, I had to connect to the internet and run a system update to get the latest version, which was 4.3. Then I had to get the MAC address of my Wii through my wireless settings, write it down, input it into the Letterbaum website, download the zip file that it gave me, extract it to a FAT32 formatted SD card using an SD to USB adapter, insert the SD card into my Wii, reboot the Wii, click the mail icon on the home screen, find the correct calendar entry, open the letter bomb, and install BootMe and the Homebrew channel. Once you reboot, you will be presented with a Boot Me menu. Your Wiimote will not work on this screen, so you're going to need to navigate with the buttons on the Wii. The power button will cycle through your options, and the reset button will run the selected option. I highly recommend backing up your Wii's NAND through the Boot Me menu by doing what you see on screen. This will make sure that even if you seriously screw something up with your Wii, you will have a backup of your entire system when it was working so that you can restore to it. Back up the NAND.bin file on your SD card to your computer somewhere for safekeeping. The next step after putting the SD card back into my Wii was to install Preloader. This will let you make changes to the Wii's system menu, like letting you disable the menu music or sounds, skip the health and safety screen, and remove the region lock from your Wii. And it also lets you do all sorts of other stuff, so feel free to poke around in the system menu hacks option in Preloader. The last part of the setup is installing custom iOS, which will let you play games from a USB drive. This is one of those steps that can end up breaking your Wii and forcing you to restore through BootMe, so it is very important that you follow the guide in the description exactly. Once you have completed the setup, you will be able to play Wii games that you backed up to a USB drive or found online on some piracy site through a program called USB Loader GX. You will also be able to play GameCube ROMs through a program called Nintendon't, even if you don't have a backwards compatible Wii. I've only scratched the surface on what is possible with the Wii. I should mention that pretty much everything in this video applies to the Wii U because you can actually hack the virtual Wii within the Wii U and, you know, get Homebrew Channel and pretty much everything else that you can do with the regular Wii. Although the video output modes are a little different, so I'll cover that in the Wii U video, which I'll get around to eventually when I can afford a Wii U. <laughs> Give me money. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Now, since the Wii is so cheap, I'm really just going to recommend that anyone with a Wii just go ahead and hack it. There's really no penalty. It's not like you can get banned online because all the online servers are down. So there's really no reason not to hack your Wii. Although, I don't know if I would recommend going out and getting a Wii just to hack it because... Well, there's a big elephant in the room that I haven't addressed yet. Or should I say, dolphin in the room. Because <sighs> you can emulate the Wii on your PC using a program called Dolphin, the emulator. That's right, you can play just about every Wii game on your PC using an emulator called Dolphin. You can also play with a real Wii controller using a USB sensor bar and a Bluetooth adapter. Oh, uh, what? You wanna, you wanna front with me? You wanna, you wanna come at me with that, that bitch ass shit, you know? What you know about that? Fucking game set match. To be honest, you don't even need the sensor bar, you could just light two candles next to your TV and it would work just as well. You can also play with a PS4 controller and any other controller that works with your PC, as well as mouse and keyboard if you prefer. Dolphin also lets you control the internal resolution that the Wii renders games at, allowing for much sharper 3D models. Even if you have a Wii, it might be worth it to switch to PC emulation for the upscaled graphics and input options. 
To wrap up this whole video, if you already own a Wii, yes, you should hack it. If you think that there's a reason why you shouldn't, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll tell you why you're wrong. If you don't already own a Wii, go out and get one. They're super cheap and you can play Wii and GameCube games all day. Now, keep in mind that this is a really... Keep in mind that they are really old and, you know, they use the composite or component connectors to hook to your TV and not all modern TVs will support that. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, you know, hit one of the buttons below the the video. It doesn't really matter which one. If you really liked what you saw here and want to help me buy stuff to make videos with, you know, you could support me on Patreon. Give me your money and then maybe you'll see a return on it. Doesn't that sound like a good investment?